Good morning, folks. Today, we've got a look at our star in multiple wavelengths. We've got some solid magnetic field articles. And after giving climate a day off yesterday, well, hello again. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day on the sun was relatively quiet, especially on the Earth-facing half. Coronal holes continue turning in, and let's get a fuller look at those structures in 211 angstroms. Slightly different shine from ionized iron made to really bring out the coronal holes versus denser regions. One small eruption just over the limb fired a CME this morning. It was the same area that fired that last one 90 degrees away from Earth. No concern here. As for what we are watching now, there are a number of plasma filaments writhing around in the corona. We're eyeing those for eruptive potential, especially with the only sunspots on the disk about to turn out of view. Let's go to seismicity up next. Top quake of the day was a 6.4 in the Solomon Islands, but I also want to mention 4.5 is yet another high mark in La Palma for the ongoing sequence. That one was in the early hours this morning. We've come to the September climate report next, where they share the 100-year comparison because it supports the global warming story, while the 30-year averages, a better trend indicator, shows much more blue. Now let's see some of the areas in the world more specifically. Look at all the red and the white. That white near-average cheat is how they take away blue in the map they share to the public. We're going to see the same thing where deep red here is spread, and actually lighter reds and more expanded blues come into the picture when we look over the 30-year trends. The worst was in the Pacific, though. Not sure what the idea is here taking away all that blue, when the big global weather news the last couple of days is the return of La Nina, like they're trying to hide it here or something. When their charting method erases the La Nina they're chatting about in the blogs, you know there is a major problem. And yes, it is cherry-picking to look at the internal variability low temps of the mid-1800s, low point of a long cycle. And when you compare the 30-year averages, it tells you we've already begun to hit the cresting peak of the modern pattern. Up next, it's solar system water. Europa up first, and they're detecting water vapor in its atmosphere pretty much all the time. The jets it has, while not as powerful as those at Enceladus, also don't blast that water high enough to escape into Jovian space, like Enceladus does at Saturn. Another notch on the water moon belt here in our solar system. But let's now scale up from moons to planets. Uranus and Neptune, believed to be over half water mass, are now pretty well confirmed to have their magnetic fields generated by high-pressure water beneath the surface, superionic conductive ice. And the pressures they're indicating in that outer third of those planets actually matches the pressure on water in the more middle to low mantle range here at Earth. Wink. Back to climate science, where eyes rolled at this article. It's meant to inject pure fear into people, but I was thinking, wait, haven't we been watching for two years? Even mainstream global warming thumpers admit the high ranges of warming were out. The scary models were unrealistic. Yeah, nobody told this crew. RCPs used, including one of the absurd emission-forcing scenarios, and they did it within CMIP-5, the old model, not CMIP-6. Outside of there being miles behind their own field, you can look ahead and the degree or so here or there of global warming begins to look like peanuts compared to the longer Earth cycles. This is not only the weakest peak temperature of an interglacial in the last 100,000 years, we're well overdue for the drop. Now let's come back to the winds in the thermosphere. Charged and neutral winds affected strongly during geomagnetic activity, including complete flow reversals. And at the thermosphere, this really helps us drive home the solar forcing of the stratosphere, mesosphere, and all those other upper regions of the planet. Now last but not least, one of the more mathematically challenging papers I've read this month. Minutes to read, hours to figure out the equations. But at the end of the day, it's been a couple years since that flurry of studies said our diffusion and excursion timeline was roughly 10,000 years. Here it is again. And if we're approximating, how do we not say they've done a great job? Known magnetic excursions and the 10 to 50% extinction biosphere assaults that come with them are coming to our planet a bit more than 10,000 years apart. We are not only due for the next one, but our magnetic field is shifting as would be expected. Strength is weakening. Poles racing to flip. We greatly appreciate your support. Look below the video for our playlists. You can also find them on our channel homepage. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.